Y'all want to see something so disappointing? I was really excited to get this mic and I still like it and all that. It's so cute. It's a heart, but I got to figure out why this clicking noise happens periodically. It's really annoying. But for now, I got to film old school today and use the mic on my camera. I'm so sorry. What's up, idols? It's CC Listen 3. Welcome back to my channel. And thank you so much for clicking on this video. We have another story time for you guys today. She has to not be identified by name because she said her parents might see this. And you see the title. She told them she was going to see a friend in Korea. She did not tell them she was going to see a boy in Korea. She said she had a main character moment. She was doing it for the plot. She does not recommend or condone it and neither do I. But for this story, we're going to call her Jasmine because this boy literally showed her a whole new world. And we'll call him Junie. Junie and Jasmine. So Jasmine met a guy on Omegle last year. And I find this funny because if you saw the video that I put on Patreon, that was a whole different type of Omega story. It showed how Omega can go very wrong and be very dangerous. You can join my Patreon with the link in the description if you want to see that story. Also, I just uploaded another NSFW video, AKA not safe for YouTube video on Patreon. He seemed to like what I was doing to him, but I'll admit I'm not the most experienced person in that department. So now we get to the main event when he started pumping. Oh God, I'm blushing so hard while I write this, but it does feel fun to relive the details of that night. I still think about him, even though it's been like a year. He asked me how I wanted it. He actually asked if he should go harder, slower, deeper. But it's nice to see Omega being used for good in this story. I didn't know people use Omega to date. I've never used Omega. The thought of speaking face to face with a stranger terrifies me to the core. I just imagine every other swipe or script, however you meet new people would be some dude like this. Y'all know what I'm doing, right? I don't want to see no strangers eggplants or aubergines. Anyway, they hit it off. Junie and Jasmine hit it off on Omegle. They decided to exchange Instagram and Junie got Jasmine to make a cacao so they could talk there as well. They talked for months without actually meeting each other in person face to face. She actually wondered if somehow she's being catfished because he was just so great. Like yes, yeah, she video chatted with him and everything, but she couldn't shake the feeling that she was somehow being tricked by this dude. Everything was just going too well. So she's like, what is he hiding? What is he not telling me? You know, assuming the worst. So she started to voice her concerns with Junie like yeah you know we've been talking for so long but I feel like you're hiding something we haven't met yet and I don't fully trust that this is real so Junie said he has no reason to pretend to like her he stands to gain nothing by chatting with her he says she was a great woman and she was beautiful and he enjoyed getting to know her he also kept saying it's such a shame that they can't meet yet and that made her feel a lot better because she's like yeah what does he gain from talking to me like he hasn't asked for money I don't got money to give him we haven't banged yet like there's nothing in this for him maybe he does actually like me even with their time time difference, he still somehow had time to talk to her and always made her feel like a priority. She never felt like she had to go days or hours to wait to hear from him. I appreciate you. And they talked about her going to visit him in Korea all the time. And for them speaking this like it was going to happen tomorrow just made it feel more real and made them feel better that one day soon it'll probably happen. Jasmine's main issue was getting the fun. She had plenty of sick days, plenty of vacation days. So she had the time off. She just needed to save up enough to go and see him. She also didn't have her passport yet. So that was the first real step she took into making meeting him a reality. She finally got her passport. She couldn't wait to tell him when she finally got it. It's been 84 years. It took about three weeks to arrive, but she was able to surprise him in a video call. She said he was so happy, he could not stop smiling and that made her feel so good about him. He said it was perfect because he had a surprise for her that he could now start planning. So she asked like, what do you mean by that? And he said, oh, nothing. Um, What's your address? Just be on the lookout for something that's gonna come in the mail. She didn't think a whole lot of it, but she was excited to receive this gift from him. So Jasmine and Juni had their normal chats over the next few weeks. She told him she was finally able to have a good amount of money saved up for this trip. By the way, at this point, nothing is like official with them. Like they don't want to become a real couple or anything like that until they actually meet each other in person and see if the sparks and the jitters are there. So one day, Junie texted her and told her to check the mail. So when she gets home from work, she goes, checks the mail, and she sees an envelope from Junie. So when she opens it, she sees a plane ticket. <laughs> She's like, wait, no, you did not actually get me a plane ticket. How much did this cost? I gotta pay you back. And he said, don't worry about it. Seeing you will be my payback. You so he got her a round trip ticket with an open-ended date. So like she could leave whenever and come back whenever. With her finally having her passport and having her hands physically on a ticket, the fire was lit under her butt and she started to save money for this trip. Well, first she had to find accommodations and all that. And he said he could help her with that. I can show you the world. 
shining, shimmering. He said as long as it's not too expensive, because you know it does depend how long she plans to be there. So she did say she was gonna be there for a month, but it's still like a month from now. <laughs> At first he was like, hmm, isn't a month a bit long for our first meeting? She said she wanted to make sure she got the biggest bang for his buck since he bought her a round trip ticket. She wanted to make sure it was like a good quantity of time that she was there with him. So in the meantime, they had time to find accommodation. And while he was helping her look, he also said, I have a one bedroom apartment if you wanna come and stay with me. And that did sound exciting to her, but she said, you know, since we're just meeting for the first time, I should get like an accommodation first. And if things go well, then maybe I could like switch to staying with you. But for the first week or two, I want to find my own hotel. So with everything planned and chatting for months, this trip was finally actually happening. She said the flight was long, but knowing that he was going to be there waiting for her when she arrived got her through it. So she landed, went through baggage claim, got to arrivals, and she saw this cute boy holding a sign that said, welcome to Korea. And she said he looked exactly the same way he did online. He was a little shorter than she expected, but she did not mind that. He had this whole dorky aesthetic. But she said he wore this cute cardigan, a pair of chucks, plain white tee and jeans with some glasses. And the reason she liked that and noted that and remembered that is because when they were talking, you know, for their months and weeks and stuff, she mentioned the styles that she likes. And she shared a Pinterest board with him. Like, oh, I like when guys dress like this. And that's what was on her Pinterest. So to see him dress the way that she had envisioned, she thought that was so cute. First thing he asked was, do you like my outfit? <laughs> and she joked that it wasn't fair that he looked so fresh and so clean. and she's sweaty, sticky, was just on an uncomfortable flight for like 12 hours. She said she probably looked and smelled like death. He's like, stop it, you look beautiful, so beautiful. Then he said, let me take you to your accommodation, I'll get you set up and then you can sleep and shower and I have the day planned for us tomorrow. He said he also wanted to make sure her place wasn't sketchy cause you know, she is a girl by herself in this foreign country. So they took the train to Mapo and that's where her accommodation was. So to get to the accommodation, he looks around, he asks if this is okay, if she likes it, if it's good. And she's just happy to be in Korea, <laughs> knowing she's gonna be spending the next month with this guy. So she said she was happy and she hugged him and Junie saw that moment to like give her a quick little peck, just just a little little kiss like like that on the lips. And because it was so sudden, they both just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, anyway, you must be tired. I'll let you sleep. Call me if you need anything. See you tomorrow. So Jasmine did call him like immediately because she needed his help to order some food on Pedal. <laughs> so she ate, she showered, and she went to sleep. And she slept so long, but she did end up waking up really early. So she said she was just laying there waiting to hear from Junie about the day that they had planned. So when he finally texted her, he said, can you be ready around noon? I hope you slept well. First thing he had planned was a good old lunch. She had never had like proper authentic Korean food and now this was her chance. She said most of the Korean restaurants in her town were run by like Chinese shop owners and they make like Vietnamese food and Thai food and Korean food, but they're Chinese. Stop the cap. <laughs> After they had lunch, he took her to Lotte Tower because he said he wanted her to see the highest peak in the city and he wanted her to take it all in and he wanted to show her the views. After that, they went to Lotte World because it's right there. <laughs> they were a little worried that it might rain, but part of Lotte World is inside, so that was like his backup plan. Luckily for them though, it didn't rain and in fact, they were able to watch the sunset. Well, as much of a sunset as you can watch living in a really crowded city. So as the night rolled in, he wanted to take her to a jazz lounge so they could chill, enjoy some music, and have some drinkers. On the way to the lounge though, he made her eat some street food because he said, look, if you're gonna drink, I wanna make sure you have some good food in your belly. So yeah, that was their first date. Lunch, Lotte World, Lotte Tower, jazz. <laughs> and she was really impressed that so far he was exactly the same way in person as he's been online these past few months. He didn't like suddenly become a creep or, or needy or anything. Like it was perfect. Everything was perfect. She did say he seemed a bit shy with his English skills. Like he seemed hesitant to speak it, but she understood him just fine. As their night came to an end, unfortunately, Junie has work the next day. Jasmine asked if he would sleep over that night. What do you mean by that? He seemed flustered and asked why. She said, since I can't see you tomorrow, I don't want the night to end, can you sleep over? Don't worry, I don't mean like that, nothing like that. We'll just watch a movie, have some snacks, but we can spend more time together. He said he thinks it's a bad idea. He said he thinks it's a bad idea because he would be too tempted and didn't want to cross that line. Ooh. She respected his honesty, but she was 
disappointed. She said it was a shame that, you know, he couldn't, he's a grown man and he couldn't control his, his potential urges and control himself around her because she really just wanted to spend more time with him. So yeah, that's how their first date ended. So about an hour after he walked her home, like up to her door, he called her and asked her if she was okay and she admitted that she was disappointed. She wanted to spend more time with him. So he apologized and said he could come over the next day after his work. So then Jasmine's like, oh really? You can control your urges tomorrow, but not tonight? Life, I know it was the right the sass on this one so the next day she just slept she was definitely more sleepy than she realized things got awkward though because when Junie was texting her he thought she was ignoring him but she was just sleep and since their conversation the night before ended with her saying how disappointed she was he thought she was mad at him so he said he'd make it up to her and come over tonight with snacks and they can watch movies she was happy to see him when he came over but she also said she felt like she had to make a conscious effort to not tempt him too much so she wore a hoodie and sweatpants and aside from some cuddling, they actually did just watch a movie and they did not cross any line. It was a sweet PG night, safe for YouTube. In fact, Junie spent a few nights at Jasmine's and nothing happened. They didn't cross any line. They kept it respectful. So at this point, it's been about 10 days that Jasmine's been in Korea spending her time with Junie. And things are going great. And eventually he asked her if she wanted to meet his friends because they ask about her a lot. She's like, yeah, I'd like to meet them, but what do you mean they ask about me? He's like, well, you know, you've been in Korea for a few days and I'm spending a lot of time with you. So they're wondering where I've been and who I'm with. And when I tell them I'm with my girlfriend, they want to meet you. So she was like, I'm your girlfriend? I'm your girlfriend? Your girlfriend? This is the first time he's addressed her as his girlfriend. So she was so fucking happy that he said that. Of course she wants to meet his friends because that means this is getting more real. So he said for this little meeting, they just go to a cafe by the river and if the weather turns out to be nicer, then they can go for a walk and just hang out outside. She was really excited to meet them, especially meeting them as Junie's girlfriend. She said, and I quote, not as just some bitch from Omegle. <laughs> so she met three of his friends and all of them were guys. One spoke no English at all. One was really good at English, but he, he was quiet, he didn't really talk that much. And the other was really loud, really social, but really bad at English, but he tried hard. So they're asking her, what do you like about Junie? Cause he's like ugly, like making jokes. He's a wet toady, he's a loser. Brother, What's that? What's that, brother? And they were really nice to her, except one was kind of shy and to himself. He didn't seem to really care one way or the other. They even offered to pay for Jasmine's coffee. And then Junie's like, what? She's my girlfriend. Why wouldn't I pay for her coffee? Why wouldn't I pay? They would like fumble over each other and rush to open the door for her, like trying to get a reaction from Junie. She said it was so funny watching them be all goofy. And she just liked that dynamic, seeing them in this natural habitat. Unfortunately though, it did start to rain. So they had to cut this meeting short and said they definitely do this again soon on a better day. Jasmine was excited anyway to get back home to a warm and dry place. Junie stayed over that night and uh, this time a line was crossed. They were watching something scary and Junie jumped. Come on, yeah, I'm not afraid, you know. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Good. <laughs> 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 They left and suddenly Jasmine got the urge to just start making out with him. She stopped mid kiss and said, so you're my boyfriend now, right? And he said, yeah. And she said, next thing you know, they were making out until all of their clothes were off. And well, we all know what happened next. She said to her, this made the relationship feel absolutely real. And she went on to absolutely enjoy her time in Korea, though unfortunately she was only there for a month and he does work, like he has a full-time job. There were a lot of days where he would have to text her and be like, don't feel too lonely today. I'll come see you when I finish work tonight. Meet me at my work on my lunch break. I can see you this morning before work, things like that. So as of now, sending us this email, she's in a long distance relationship with Junie. That was the one time they met in person. It was a whole month together. And now she's planning to go and see him, but this time stay for a much longer time. She's actually hoping it happens later this year in the fall time. So there may be a part two soon. Jasmine, thank you so much for taking us into this romance. Never have I had a man put me on a plane and fly me out to see him. That's goals. And Junie sounds like such a good guy. I'm so happy for y'all. This is amazing. It's always nice to get good news on this channel. If you want more story times like this, please binge the playlist that's about to pop up on the end screen. I have so many story times on this channel at this point, all like this, foreigners dating in Korea. Thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong.